Hello, everyone. My name is Jordan Bell, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Deploy Bold Reports in Kubernetes Clusters. Today is Thursday, January 27th, and I will pass this off to Rangan Nathan if you would like to begin presenting. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Rangan Nathan, and I am a part of a Bold Reports team. I will demonstrate how to deploy Bold Reports in Kubernetes. Let's begin. As I mentioned in agenda, I will present a quick introduction about our Bold Reports Enterprise reporting. Following that, I will start to discuss about what is Kubernetes, multiple space of deployment in Kubernetes, Kubernetes architecture and components, prerequisites and Kubernetes setup, installation on Kubernetes cluster, SSL configuration, and client library installation. Let me begin by sharing a few details about enterprise reporting. Business user need a reporting tool to track and improvise their business. Do you have a data in your DB, but you're not sure how to visualize those data? Bold reports will help to create a report to display your data in visualized format. Bold Reports Enterprise Reporting is a business intelligence report management tool built by Zinc Fusion for creating, managing, and distributing pixel perfect paginator RDL reports. Begin the organization firewall. Enterprise reporting helps us to analyze, explain, and report business information in our day to day life. Is this your first experience with Kubernetes? Let me share a quick introduction about Kubernetes. Kubernetes is an open source system for automating deployment, scaling, and managing of containerized applications. Let me list out some of the features of Kubernetes. Self-healing capabilities. It will automatically bring up the container when it goes down. Automated rollout and rollback. We can do zero downtime deployment where a new app can be rolled out without taking downtime of the previous app. Components can act as a separate unit. It means each sub-application can be deployed in a Kubernetes in a different containers. So this can be achievable by Kubernetes. Horizontal scaling and load balancing. Kates can do horizontally scale our containers. Run everywhere. It means we can deploy in your on machine or you can use any of the cloud providers. Your question may rise in your mind, why we need Kubernetes? Let me answer for that. Assume you are having an application that running in a different container, but what happens when one or more of those containers goes down? So we manage, so how we manage those containers? We can use Docker Compose also, but in production environment, what happens when we scale or heal the containers. Docker Compose is not suitable for a production. So Gates will manage it, manage the container for us and scale up the container when it needed. As I said before, it will up or create the container when it goes down or deleted. On this slide, we will discuss how Gates differ from other deployment methods. There is no downtime in KH while upgrading the application, but it cannot be achieved by other deployment methods. If application is downing in these three deployment methods like Linux, Windows, and Azure App Service, we need to monitor and we need to update the application back again. But, it, but in KH, it's a self-manage, so you don't need to worry about managing the application. In case we can deploy each sub application in a separate container and act as an individual application, and it can contact other applications in a robust network. Now I will explain how Kubernetes will manage our containers and how it works. Kubernetes had a master node. This is the main controller of all operation like managing the different employees, which is called as a worker nodes. Worker node are the virtual machines. 
master node will create a cluster and put worker node together in the cluster master node will create a pods in each of these nodes pods are where to host a container in the nodes we cannot directly contact with our container pods are the intermediators to help contact with our container if any one of the pods are bent down master node will create a new pod in that node and delete the existing pod without a zero downtime in this slide i will explain multiple deployment methods for kubernetes approach for a installing the enterprise reporting it can be deployed in windows or linux machine using a docker or minikube but uh, docker desktop is easier to install the kubernetes in your machine also it can be deployed in two main cloud providers like azure kubernetes cluster and uh, amazon elastic kubernetes service we have a future plan to provide a kubernetes support in gke also it's a google kubernetes engine Now we have a three option for deploying bold reports in a Kubernetes cluster. Let's compare these three options now. There is no cl cluster cost for an on-premise and AKS platform, but EK is charging a $0.1 per hour for cluster. We cannot be able to increase a node in on-premise mode. And for AKS, they are charging $0.4 per hour and EK is charging $0.195 per hour. It may vary from a node plan you're going to choose. There is no automatic node health repair for on-premise and EKS platform, but AKS had an automatic node health repair. So we hand over to you for selecting the platform to deploy the application in Kubernetes. Let's look at the cluster prerequisites sites for deploying the application in Kubernetes. The following hardware requirements are necessary to deploy bold reports application in Kubernetes cluster. CPU must be two or more. Here I denoted the VM as a CPU. Each machine should have a minimum of 4 GB RAM and storage will differ from what platform you are going to choose. The following software requirements are necessary to run the bold reports enterprise edition. We are giving a support for um, SQL DBs like Microsoft SQL Server. PostgreSQL or MySQL. You can choose any one of these SQL DBs and please make sure your DB will be accessible by outside the machine tool. And command line tools like a Kubectl, it is necessary for all the platforms you're going to deploy your application in Kubernetes. To access your cluster, you need to install AWS CLI or AKS CLI in your machine. You can choose any one of the web browsers like Microsoft Edge, Firefox, or Chrome. Now we have prepared the cluster with all prerequisites necessary for deployment. To get started with the installation, we have to download the KH deployment files. It can be downloaded from our official Bold Reports GitHub branch through the link mentioned in the slide. As a part of this section, we will discuss our Kubernetes deployment files and how use them to deploy Bold Reports Enterprise reporting. So these are these files like namespace YAML, log for net, PVC client, deployment, HPA, service, and ingress. Now we're going to discuss about deployment and uh, ingress file here. Deployment is a declarative way to manage the pods using a replica set. Deployment and replica sets ensure the pods are running and replica set ensure requested number of pods are available in your cluster. Ingress. Ingress, it supports, it exposed to HTTP and HTTP route, routes from outside the cluster to service within the cluster. Traffic routing is controlled by a rules defined on an ingress resource. In our cluster, we must all apply all these files. Now let's see the deployment process in Kubernetes. 
my plan is to deploy the bold reports enterprise reporting in AKS platform. Things to be prepared. I, I created a cluster. It has a maximum of five nodes. And also I created a file share. Our first step to install the A Azure CLI on your machine. I already did that. Then now we show how to configure the cluster and cluster and and cube config in your machine. Once Azure CLI was installed, please open the PowerShell and type and and run the command as an AC login. This command is used to log in into your Azure portal. Once this command is run, you, you need to log in into your Azure account. So I already did that. Once you log in into your Azure portal, go to your Kubernetes service and and click the connect connect button in the, in the Kubernetes service. Then run the these two commands. These two commands are used for configure your cluster into your local machine Kubernetes with Kubectl. It will update the cluster details in your local kube config file. Local kube config file is placed in the users folder inside the user folder dot cube and config file list once we run those command the azure cluster azure cluster details will be provided in this section Now I'm going to apply, apply our deployment files in a Kubernetes cluster. This command is used to install the Nginx in your cluster. I already did that. I starting from my namespace YAML. For my convenience, I use the Visual Studio code. I put the name as a uh, world services for a name. Now let me show how to configure the SSL binding in your cluster. SSL stands for secure socket layer. It is the standard technology for keeping an internet connection secure and safeguarding any sensitive data that is being sent between two systems. By default, our application will be hosted in a non-SSL mode. If you want to configure the SSL, we need to uncommon those lines in a English file. And we can replace the example.com with our domain name. Now let me share you how to configure SSL and map the domain to our application. So these are my SSL key and the SSL certificate. So we need to copy this path and paste in this. Command. This command is used to create a TLS file in your cluster. I already paste the private um, SSL key path and this for a SSL certificate path. Now I'm going to apply this command in our cluster.
and the secret name is uh, bold reports TLS. Now I am going to update the log format config file. Log for, log for net config was created in our cluster. Before applying the index file, we need to some changes for a SSL configuration. My domain is kubernetes webinar.boldreports.com. I uncommon those lines and replace my DNS here. So these are my secrets name where I created that. So now I'm going to apply my English file. So English was created. This command is used to get the IP address of your Nginx controller. Please repeat this command once you get until you get the address of IP address of your ingress. Or you can put in a watch window. For that, we need to add a hyphen W in the last of a comment. Yes, now I'm getting that IP address of ingress file. Before applying PVC climb APIs, we need to create a file share in our Azure. Once we created a file share, we need to mention the file share name here in PVC client file. My file share name is a KH webinar. These are my account name and Azure storage account key. This should be converted into base64 format and replace here. storage and PVC and PVC claim was created for our cluster. For deployment changes, we need to mention our base URL in, in this section. So parts are created now. Now we're going to apply the HPA deployment. Now we're going to update the service. Services are creating for um, each port. We apply all the deployment files. Now we check the port status now. For this, we need to run this command for checking the port status. So reporting bots are running. You can wait for uh, IDP bots. So, or you can put in the watch window. It will show the current status of the bots.
or exit from this watch window, you can give a control C. Now we can go in to describe the IDP web port. For the, we need to copy the port name. So this is a command for uh, describing the parts. Okay, it's actually created. Let's see the what status. Okay, now it's actually running. This command is used to what what version of a Docker image is using for each particular port. Let me show it, show here. For example, reports web deployment using a Bold report server 3.3.23 version. So this command is used to get the image version for each each port. Now we're going to access access our site using our base URL. I log in with my Azure I'm going to use a Postgres SQL. I put the DB name as a old report service. Okay, it's not. It take a time to deploy our application. Sorry, sorry for the site. In back end, it creating the database for a tenant and a reporting site. That's why it's taking time for this.
now our pull reports application is successfully deployed in a case cluster now we're going to discuss about the client libraries on how to install the client libraries in our cluster Bold import support to connect third party data source also. We use a client library such as Oracle, PostgreSQL, and MySQL to connect with the respective SQL database variant. PhantomJS is a headless web kit scriptable with the JavaScript. This executable file is necessary to export the data visualization, visualization report items during the report schedule. Let me show you how to install these client libraries. To install our client libraries, we need to mention the values in what are the what are all the client libraries we need. We need to mention those values in this section in the deployment file. You can you can you can mention in um, while creating your EKS cluster and uh, while deploying, or you can do it in later also. And I mentioned those values in um, while creating that application in EKS cluster. EKS cluster. And now we are going to discuss about um, how to install the Phantom JS in our EKS cluster. For that, we need to first we need to bash our any one of the parts. I'm going to take the input part. This is the command to bash our part. So we need to replace the part name here. And run this thing. Now we are inside the container. As I mentioned in the slide, for Phantom JS installation, we need to go in this location in our pod. So we can use this command to jump into that location. We need to install a sudo and duplicate commands so for that. And I run these comments. Soda was installed in our cluster. Yes. Now I'm, now I'm going to run the run this command one by one to install and to download and install the Phantom JS in our AKS cluster. Now the Phantom JS one was installed in our cluster.
Thank you. All right, thank you so much, everyone. That was learning how to deploy bold reports in Kubernetes clusters. All right, that will conclude this webinar session. So I hope everybody has a great rest of their days and thank you for joining. <laughs>